Gillette World Sport is in New York to study the backstroke at one of the most successful swim clubs in the United States. Badger has been the home of many Olympic champions and uh, American records, and uh, many of the world's best coaches and swimmers have trained here. And we've always strived to be not only the best in this country, but the best in the world. We have about 12 people who have qualified for the Olympic trials this year. Out of that 12, there's probably four who have a legitimate chance of making the team. Good work. Take off the paddles and then uh, come back out here. As a U.S. national team coach for 23 years, Collins is ideally placed to explain how to perfect the backstroke. Technique is very important in swimming. I've always thought of backstroke as being uh, turnover, tempo, I mean, how fast your arms turn kick, you got to have a steady backstroke kick and catch, which means catching the water. You want to think about with your hands, thumbs out, pinkies in. So when we're coming out of the water, you want your thumbs out and then slowly rotate it and have your pinky come in and be the first finger to go in the stroke. doing an exaggerated drill using a large paddles so that he can feel what his hands are doing right behind his shoulder, which is a very critical part of the backstroke pull. And by slowing down, almost like in slow motion, that entry into the water uh, enables him to feel the way he should be catching when he doesn't have the paddles on. You want to think about looking at a clock. If your hand's going to be at the 11 o'clock hand and the 1 o'clock hand, kind of like having it as a Y. If you're gonna think about your head, you wanna think about bringing your head all the way back, maybe like some drill or some thought of it is looking at your eyebrows, you know? So that way, you're gonna bring your head all the way back. So what that's gonna do with your body, that's gonna raise your hips up. You wanna be in line, and the line is from backstroke to the hips, shoulders, and the head. Your head should be basically like you're laying on a pillow that's where your head position should be. So chin not too much like this, not too far back. But your body stays in line. And you want to be high in the water. You want to see the bathing suit out of the water. The two hip bones on either side should be almost right on top of the water. If the hips are low, you're in trouble in backstroke. Strangely enough, the hips control what your arms and how you pull. If you don't use your hips correctly, if you don't rotate them enough, it's hard to get the proper angle of pull and the proper amount of strength into the pull, which actually obviously equates into power. It's your, um, your triceps, your deltoids, your lats that provide most of the power into, the, into your arms. But the key is always how fast can you turn over. The faster they can turn over efficiently, effectively, the faster they're going to go. It's like a windmill. Every day when you go into practice, you want to think about what you do in the water is what you want to do at the meet. Sometimes if I'm thinking about a pre-meet, sometimes I'll go in a room and I'll sit in a dark room and just like close my eyes and think about this is what I need to do or go through the whole race. This is where I'm going to be swimming. This is how many kicks I'm going to be having under the water. This is how my strokes going to be. This is how many strokes I'm going to take and just work my thought process of how that race is going to be and how it's going to end. And the 100 meter backstroke event is one of the most highly contested events this year and actually the past few years. There's about six or seven or eight guys around the world and um, any one of them on any, any given day could win that event. 